Hi everyone, it's Bridget here from Bridget's Kitchen. Thought I would do a really quick little a video with you guys, a bit of a kitchen tutorial, ho hopefully a very educational tutorial as well, about how to make my super healthy chicken scotch eggs. Now these eggs are perfect for breakfast, but not only they are perfect for breakfast, but they're also marvelous because they're completely portable. So basically what they are is they are a hard boiled egg or a semi boiled egg. Uh, wrapped around some delicious flavorsome chicken mince that we then cook into the air put into the air fryer and we cook so normally scotch eggs and scotch eggs are a recipe um, that are very very popular in parts of Europe especially within um, England within the UK but with the scotch eggs that you get in Europe they're usually deep fried and that's not healthy so we're gonna do a healthy version uh, I'm going to give you some um, really simple pointers about how to get it right because there are a few little watch points along the way but in general, I think my biggest um, tip or hint when it comes to making your own scotch eggs at home is just take your time, you know, until you get used to holding, the, you know, the egg because it is a little bit, you know, it can be a little bit of a minefield, not a big minefield, just a little minefield. So um, I thought I'd start with some really simple things. So as I was saying, scotch eggs in general are very, very portable, which means that you can take them on picnics. You can take them to work. Um, as we're coming into the warmer months um, here in Australia and New Zealand and the southern part of the world and the southern hemispheres, we're coming into these warmer months. It's really nice to have a few ideas on what we can um, make or what we can take along to picnics or barbecues or just, you know, little parties. And I reckon that this is such a fabulous recipe. No one will know it's healthy. That's the best part, right? <laughs> <laughs> You'll be tricking everyone. No one will know it's healthy. It's so wonderful because it tastes fabulous, you know, and when food tastes fabulous, it doesn't matter, you know, whether it's healthy, you know, you don't even have to tell anyone. You can keep that your little secret. So um, here we go. So the first thing you need to do, of course, is to think about your eggs because we need to, we definitely need to cook the eggs um, a little bit before we pop them into the air fryer. Now I do use an air fryer. You could try this recipe in the oven, but I have to tell you that um, I have tried both methods and they just don't come up quite as nice in the oven as they do in the air fryer. So you can do them in the oven, set your oven on 180 degrees Celsius, Celsius which is 350 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's what you want to start it off in. But in our air fryer, we once again, um, we set it on 180 degrees. So air fryer we can leave for a little bit because the first thing we need to do is think about our eggs. So um, grab yourself up a pot. Now the pot that I'm using here, saucepan, pot, whatever you want to call it, um, it's not huge as you can see. I can comfortably um, put seven eggs, so that's enough breakfast for literally for one week. So seven scotch eggs I'm making with this one pot. Fill your pot with water. Now here's a really important little tip. And I know we all have boiled eggs in our time, but this tip I actually learned off one of my mentors, a very, very well-known chef who I look up to, who's an incredible chef. He's got Michelin star restaurants all around the world. Now, before you turn up your nose, his name is Gordon Ramsay. Believe it or not, despite what you think about Gordon, Gordon is an amazing chef. Technically, I can't fault him. That's why he has Michelin star restaurants all around the world, because technically he's a very good chef. I know you see him on TV and he's yelling and he's swearing, but that's just the persona. If you are to meet Gordon Ramsay in person, he is a beautiful and lovely, lovely man. But the best thing about Gordon is he's an amazing chef. So I learned this off Gordon. So you know it's good, right? If you're learning it off one of the best chefs in the world. So into your pot, fill it with water. Bring the pot to the boil. No eggs are in my pot right now. Bring it to the boil. Once it's at a gentle boil, boil, we've got like a hard simmer, not bubbling frantically and you've got you know water coming all over the place. You don't want that. You just want it to be at a little gentle simmer. Once it's at a gentle simmer, very gently put your eggs into the water. Now, when I say gently, what I'm talking about is take your egg and ideally put it onto a really large spoon and then drop that spoon into the water. Don't stand there and drop your eggs from a great height because the shell will crack and that will then mean that our eggs won't cook evenly, which is what we want. So taking your raw eggs. Now I use size six eggs for this recipe. I find that they're easier to wrap the chicken mince around. I normally buy large eggs or size seven, but I actually use size six eggs for this recipe because they're a little bit smaller. So take your eggs, very gently put them into your pot of simmering water. Now, before you do that, actually, I've got one more stage step to tell you about before then. Before your eggs go into the pot, I would also suggest that you put a teaspoon of baking soda in the water as it's coming to the boil. Now the reason for the baking soda is baking soda will help the water to become more alkaline. 
and when um, the water is more alkaline it's going to help to peel your eggs which if you've ever struggled with egg peeling that's a great little tip for you whether you're making scotch eggs or you're just peeling hardboard eggs or whatever it is when you are boiling your eggs add just a teaspoon of baking soda it will help to make the water more alkaline which is also going to help to peel your eggs once they've finished cooking um, the other way of um, ensuring that your eggs are easy to peel as if you're using old eggs because once again old eggs are more alkaline than fresh eggs and older eggs are easier to peel but I do realize that's really hard to know what age your eggs are when you buy if you buy them from the supermarket or from the veggie shop uh, if you if they're coming from your chickens outside you know exactly how old they are and chances are you may even struggle with your with your chickens because the f eggs are so fresh so eggs are more alkaline easier to peel when they're older if you don't know the age of your eggs, I don't know the age of my eggs, I put just that one teaspoon of baking soda in the water as it's coming to the bowl. Okay, so my eggs are in there. Now, depending on how long you cook your eggs, it's all dependent on how you like your eggs cooked. Me personally, do not get offended. I like my eggs soft, so my white is firm and my yolk is runny. Everyone's different, you know, and... If, because I like my eggs that way doesn't mean you have to have them that way you can cook your eggs if you like them harder you cook them longer so for example for eggs which is hard white soft runny yolk it's four and a half minutes from once they go into the boiling water I set my timer for four and a half minutes if you want them to be more harder more harder is that a good I don't even think that's really good English it's bad grammar, grammar isn't it apologies if you want them to be firmer the yolk part, allow them to cook for a little bit longer. So five minutes will get them firmer. Six minutes, even firmer. And if you like them completely cooked, you want to leave them in the boiling water for seven minutes. So once your time is off, up, immediately remove the pot from the cooktop. Go over to the, to the tap and run cold water into your pot. And as you're running cold water into your pot, what you are doing now is you're cooling the eggs down. You are making them, you're preventing them from continuing to cook. Especially if you like your eggs soft like me, you need to halt the cooking process. The way that we do that is by ensuring that we immediately cool them down. I know I'm sounding like it's a really big deal, but I've got a bit of a thing when it comes to my cooked eggs. I like them to just be perfectly, perfectly runny. Um, so I will run over to the sink literally and I'll run cold water into my pot until my eggs are cool. The next step we're going to do, and this is what Gordon taught me, and this is why I love him so much. Um, what Gordon taught me, <laughs> many things he's taught me over the years, is the other way to ensure that your eggs stop cooking, so the internal part stops cooking so you get the perfectly cooked egg, is grab your cooked egg, and that is a cooked egg, and then what you want to do is you want to crack it very gently and run it along the bench. So I'm just going to go, I'm going to try and attempt to put my camera down so you guys can see what I'm talking about here. All right, here we go. So taking your cooked egg, gently crack it on the bench. Just gently. I'm not being really hard. I'm literally just cracking the shell. And as I'm cracking the shell, what is now happening is that the air that's all trapped, the hot air that's been trapped inside that egg as it was boiling, is now beginning to be released. And that means that it is releasing, um, when it's releasing the air, it's halting the cooking process. So I'm cracking it. I can actually roll it as well. Give it a bit of a roll on the bench like that. And that is going to stop the eggs from cooking. Really important. So now I'm happy with my eggs. They're at the perfect um, temperature. Uh, sorry, perfect internal um, softness for me, but firmness in the white. And the shell should be pretty easy to remove as well. Remember, because what I did earlier is I um, put that teaspoon of baking soda in the water. You can see how easy it comes off. And i, I got to admit, and i got to be completely frank with you guys, there is nothing worse they're hard to peel eggs. It really does bother me. It does not make my day. That's pretty easy, right? I can tell that's all pretty. Can you see how soft that is? <laughs> it's like, that's just on the edge of doneness. That's bite into this now, I would get yolk like dribbling all down. So that is a perfectly cooked egg. So my eggs are done. I'm happy. I'm happy with that. So the next thing we need to think about is what happens. Can you guys see that? What happens with our our coating or our casing around it? So what I have here in these three little blobs is I have what I would normally just turn into chicken patties. So this is my chicken mince, and in my chicken mince, I've got ginger, I've got garlic, I've got fresh herbs, I've got different types of spices, salt and pepper. I've got a little bit of my sticky sauce as well. And if you want to, and I will share the recipe with you guys in the top of this uh, the top of this little video once I've finished filming it. 
So you've got the recipe for exactly what I'm making here. I also, I make my own mints for a start, but as well as making my own mints, I add an apple to about, to about half a kilo of, um, half a kilo of, of chicken breast. I throw into the processor, chop it up, throw into the food processor along with all my spices and my herbs and my different bits and pieces, garlic and ginger. And then I take a raw apple, I peel it, I, I core it, chop it into chunks and I throw it into the blender along with my mince and then I blend everything up at the same time. Now you can choose to add apple or not, that's completely up to you. I do find that the apple just gives it a little bit of delicious flavour, it's quite fabulous. But guys, it's completely up to you whether you add the apple or not, it's not going to alter the texture of this too much. So once you've made your mince and you're happy with it, and like I said, you could just turn that into chicken patties. You don't even have to do the egg if you don't want to, because that's basically the mixture there is chicken patties. And you know what I did today? I took that mince and I threw it in the wok with some sticky sauce and I cooked just the mince and then I put it into a lettuce cup and that was my that was my lunch today, was that mince. So it's just so versatile, but you could make patties out of that. But of course we're not making patties, we are making chicken scotchies. So let me just grab some water real quick. For my fingers, I've just got a little a little bowl of water there. It's going to help me to roll the patties. Let me just try and move this so you guys get more of it. Ah, that's better. Is that a better view? I think it's a little bit better, isn't it? Oh, oh, go up, go up, go up. Not too far, not too far. There we go. You guys feeling that view? That's a good view. Okay. So um, I've got my water here. Now what I want to do is I want to um, take one of my little blobs, and I did weigh that raw mixture. So that's 70 grams. Of raw chicken mince there so I weighed all my portions off on my little digital scales and then taking up obviously really super clean hands because you're dealing with raw chicken so it's really important to be really health and hygienic conscious during this part because we are dealing with chicken mince just taking that bit of water I'm just gonna just dampen my completely wetting them I'm just doing that it's gonna help me to roll it better it's not Niagara Falls in terms of dampness but my hands are definitely got a little bit of moisture on them taking up my little pre-weighed um, ball of chicken mince. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna just flatten that in the palm of my hand, just like that. There is no rhyme or reason to it. I'm just, you know, I'm not like making sure it's completely even. I'm just flattening it. Because once I've got to that stage of flattening it, I take my hard or semi-hard boiled egg and putting the biggest side down, I put it into the middle of the palm of my hand and I literally just begin to wrap the chicken meat around it. And this is where you just need to maybe just have a little bit of patience, especially the first couple times that you do it. Take your time, don't rush it, because what you're trying to do is just to gently, um, you know, encourage <laughs> the mince to go around the egg, completely cover it, so you have that perfect little ball. Okay, I'll do it one more time for you guys. So taking up your little blob, I'm going to wet my fingers just again. Just, I don't want, like I said, I just want to help to not allow the chicken mince to stick to my fingers, which is going to make it so much easier when you're doing this. So once again, we go down and we flatten, flatten it all out, taking our egg, oh he's got a little bit of shell on him, I'm just going to give him a little bit of a bath, just don't want shell, Blech. and our scotch eggs. All right, taking our egg, he goes right in the middle, see I've got the, the, I've got the pointy bit up, for some reason it's just easier to have the flat, the, the wider bit down the bottom. And then once again, we literally just start to encase the egg with the lovely mince mixture that we've made. If it's um, you're starting to stick, just go back to your water, dip, dip in the water. But once again, just take your time. You may have to do some surgery, so you might get that. So just do some surgery, give them a little bit of a, <laughs> a little bit of a bind. You'll be all right. And that is pretty much your scotch egg done. That's in its raw state, obviously. So the next thing that we need to do is think about how we're going to cook them. And I've spoken about the air fryer. Now I am using an air fryer. I'm going to just, I'm going to try and show you guys. He's just off to that side. Bear with me. Where is he? Gosh, he's a bit close. Can you see him? There's my air fryer. I am using the Kmart air fryer. I've been using the Kmart air fryer now for about four months. I love it. I, I don't have a problem with it. It cooks, it's wonderful. I think it's about 3.6 liters, so it's a, a decent sized fryer basket. I absolutely don't love it. So with the with the air fry, what you want to do is you want to turn it on. Oh, he's just turned on, he's naughty. He wasn't supposed to do that. Let's turn him off again. What you want to do with the air fry is you want to put your air fry on and I'm gonna he's not turning off, he's really naughty. Excuse me guys. It's too noisy. There we go. 
All right, so what you want to do with the air fryer is you want to set it at 180 degrees. Let me go back down again so you guys can see. 180 degrees. Oh, oh, sorry, I'm just trying to get used to my new dongle, which is this little, little thing I'm using. So 180 degrees. Our little balls here now need to go for a little bit of a swim. So I normally preheat my air fryer only for two minutes. doesn't need that long. Two minutes is all it needs on 180 degrees, which is 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, Sorry if the sound keeps fading out. Don't know why that's happening, guys. I have no idea. So um, with the balls, I have some sticky sauce in here, and I'm literally just going to run the balls through the sauce very gently, just so it's a bit coated, just like that. Run the balls through the sauce. I'm going to do that to every single one, and then when my air fryer is um, heated nicely, uh, for two minutes, I'm going to pop them in the air fryer basket. I think I can fit five at a time in my air fryer. I'm going to pop them into the air fryer. I'm going to pop them into the air fryer for, God, it's like I'm building up to it, so I'm not meant to be building up to it. I'm going to pop them in the air fryer for seven to eight minutes to cook. And guess what? I have prepared some earlier, so let's see if what they're looking like. I'm a little bit nervous, to be honest. This is always like the big reveal. So that's how many I got in my air fryer. I got five of those beautiful scotch eggs at one time. That was, um, I had them on for seven and a half minutes I think in the end seven and a half minutes um, so oh good you can hear me Ruth fantastic wonderful so yes they're in the air fryer seven to eight minutes and they should look like that when they're finished do you see how nice and crispy crispy they are they come up so good and remember all we did was a little bit of sticky sauce on top rolled them in the sticky sauce and then we put them into our air fryer but the big challenge <laughs> the big reveal was like bathroom week on on um Bathroom week, and what's that show that everyone loves watching? The Block! <laughs> or Kitchen Week, I should say. Kitchen Week's way more exciting. So the big reveal is, what does it look like once we cut it open? Um, I am nervous. I am a little bit nervous, to be honest with you. Can you guys see that? Okay, let's see what our eggs look like. Oh my gosh, look at that! <laughs> that is so good! Perfect. For me, that is perfect. So that was four and a half minutes. Um, if you like them more cooked, just go five minutes, six minutes, but for me that is perfect. I love them like this. The chicken is just cooked. There is so much flavor in that. That is the perfect little portable meal, picnic, breakfast, all those wonderful things. And yes, guys, I'm about to post with um, the recipe that I use to get that. I'm going to post it at the top of this video so you can feel free to watch it, feel free to share it. I hope that was helpful. i um, really happy with that because it's always a nervous part, isn't it? You just don't know what's going to happen once you cut into something. But these are looking good. Look at that. So now I I would put that in, um, let that cool down completely, and then I store that in the fridge. Yes, you can freeze it. If you're wondering, you can freeze these. Um, uh, Bonnie, yes, these are stage two breakfast. They are the new breakfast menu, which is 70 grams of chicken and uh, one egg. You can also use turkey mints, completely the same, but use turkey mints. But right now, um, if you wanted to store these, let them cool down first, and then store them into the in the fridge for up to four days, depending on how fresh your chicken is, by the way. Your chicken needs to be lovely and fresh. If you don't want to store them in the fridge, you can also freeze them, but just to frost them overnight in the fridge, and then microwave them just very, very briefly for about 20 to 30 seconds when you're ready to eat. And they are wonderful and good to go. So thank you guys for joining me. Hope to see you again real soon. <laughs> Here in Bridges Kitchen. Take care. Bye.